Please clap your hands, stamp your feet, and go absolutely wild for the men with coconuts! Yeah! Let's get some more noise. Just this side, make some noise! Just this side, make some noise! Just that person, make some noise! Awesome! Hello, folks, we are the men with coconuts. Are you well? Such a genuine pleasure to be here, folks. My name is Will, this is Steve and Charlie, and improvising with us all night long, we have Colin Bramwell on the key! Mr. Colin Bramwell! Yes. Colin Bramwell! So, folks, we are the men with coconuts. Give us a cheer if you've seen improv before. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> you people, any first timers to improv? Brilliant stuff. This is great, guys. So for you guys then, everything we do on this stage is 100% improvised based on your suggestions. In the vein of that, we're going to come to you and get you guys practiced at shouting some things out to warm up. First of all, I'd love to know your names. So everyone take a second to remember your name <laughs> and then shout it out nice and loud. On three, one, two, three. <laughs> we all seem to have names, that's cool. Steve, what would you like to know? Um, in the 1990s, the artist Meatloaf once proclaimed that he would do anything for love, but he wouldn't do that. After three, I want to know what that is. One, two, three! Someone always says anal, they always. Do. This entire corner, I feel. This is a rather boisterous table over there. And uh, Charlie, what would you like to know? I would like to know uh, how many chickens is a reasonable amount? After three, one, two, three! Quite a anal! Quite a, somebody's still shouting, anyway. Colin doesn't get to speak too much. Would you like to hear from Colin as well? Yeah. Oh, we should. Colin, what would you like to know, sir? Uh, hi. Uh, I'd, um, he doesn't do this often, by the way. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to know, um, like, uh, do, you, do, you, do you guys like my... Fuck. <laughs> do, you guys, do you guys like... On three, <laughs> one, two, three. Yeah. Oh, I think I feel so much better now. <laughs> Thanks. Cool. Well, I'm glad we have oh, those conversations, guys. guys. <laughs> Thank you. And oh, there is something else to let you know. Because this is all made up, we don't know what these scenes will act out will contain. We also crucially don't know how these scenes are going to end. So when one or all of us feels like we've reached the natural conclusion to the scene, we will slap the stage or shout scene, just like this. One, two, three, scene! And that is your cue to go absolutely wild and fill this huge space with loads of energy. So clap your hands, stamp your feet, turn to the person next to you, hold them by the hands, tell them how much they mean to you. <laughs> So let's practice all of those activities now. One, two, three, see! Oh, yeah, guys! Fantastic! Yeah! Thank you, folks. We're going to have so much fun in two sections. Oh, my God. Uh, to kick off section one, we're going to do a game called Emotional Roller Coaster. How this Exciting. works is two of us will act out a normal scene, but it will be changed and adapted throughout by various emotions. What we need from you guys is suggestions of loads of different emotions. Can we please have some emotions now? Pity, good to gauge the energy of the room, <laughs> cool. Do we have any more? Jealousy. Excitement and ecstasy, cool, uh, any more? Sorrow. Sorrow, thank you. <laughs> Is it a suggestion or a heckle? Let's get loads more emotions. Let's say, what was that? Anger, Anger. Anger. fantastic, uh, let's get two more. Hatred. Jealousy and hatred, awesome, and overall pretty dark, guys. <laughs> Secondly, we need some genres of film, TV, or theater. For instance, spaghetti western, film noir, silent, slapstick, any genres of film, television, or theater styles? Western, rom-com, what was that? Rom-com, great, any more? Sci-fi, Sci wait, what was that? Chick flick. flick, great, let's get two or three more. Love story, Love story. Uh, any more? Uh, porn, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Gosford, keeping it classy. And let's get one more. And horror again, cool, fair enough. Um, finally, we need a couple of as ifs, so some weird or bizarre scenarios, as if the world was on fire, as if gravity turned upside down. Uh, any weird hypothetical, as if what? As if Trump was president and Brexit. I hate to, <laughs> hate to tell you guys some terrible news, but those are not as ifs. Can we get any as ifs that are not uh, dishearteningly real? Any as ifs? The sheep are taking over, yes. fuck yeah. And let's get one more as if, as if, what was that? Stuck, Stuck in, the in the 80s. 80s. Fuck yeah. Steve, what would you like to say? Suggestion for the scene. For a suggestion for the scene, could I please have a professional relationship between two people, like doctor and nurse, but not that, because I've just said it. Nope. 
Fisherman and fish. A relationship fisherman between fish. two people. I'll take it. I'll take it, yeah. We will take yeah. it. Okay, fine. Fisherman and fish. Let's get a huge round of applause for Emotional Roller Coaster. Now, I have caught you, and you will be my supper tonight. There's no use looking back in the river, mate. That took me eight hours to get you out of there. You're going on my plate. I was, I was having a nice time with my wife and children just now. Anger. Yeah. What the bloody hell do you think you were doing? I'm a fisherman. It's my job. I pull you out of there, and then I cut your head off, and I got you, and I feed you to my wife and family. Well, if you don't mind my saying, Herbert, what's in it for me? Sorry. An oh, apology would be nice. <laughs> I have to say, you are the first trout that has ever spoken to me, and I sort of feel like we got a bit of a connection, really. Excitement. Wait, you can understand me? Well, yes, I can hear every word you're saying, and wow. it's extraordinary that you can stand up on your rear fin. Yeah. Hatred. And I, I fucking hate talented people, let alone talented fish. You're gonna, you're gonna ruin my life. Ecstasy. Oh, it's so hot in here. Oh, your shirt looks so soft. Can I rub myself against it? Oh, uh, jealousy. That's a nice shirt. I wish I could wear shirts. Pity. Well, I pity you. I mean, let's be honest. You're just a trout. I outwitted you and I pulled you straight out of that river. And it's the end for you, whether you like it or not. Western. And this boat isn't big enough for the two of us. One of us is going to go away, and it's not going to be me, because it's my boat, and I'm the one standing here with this gutton knife. Rom-com. Hang on a minute. Let me just take my glasses off. <laughs> Who knew I was hot all along? All of these years. Chick flick. I've just been catching fish and... What I failed to see was the true beauty within all of you. Thank you, Gerard Butler. I think, in many respects, the fact that I catch your kind and pull you out of the water is symbolic. Sci-fi. I couldn't find what I wanted on this planet, so I had to delve deep within the alien world that is the bottom of the river Tyne. You can delve into my bottom. <laughs> horror. I don't know why I that said that. That would be horrifying. It would be awful. I don't want to delve into your bottom. Never go there. Porn. Oh. Hang on a minute. Oh, I just I dropped you something dropped over a bit here. of your dorsal fin. Let me come and help you out. Oh, oh. sorry. Sorry, that was... Um... As if the sheep were taking over. I'm sorry. Wait. What's that over there on the hillside? Amassing in one unit. That's right. They're coming this way. They're flocking. I knew this would happen. I knew this day would come. It was foretold by the fishermen of old of Tynemouth that one day a fish would come forth and speak to the people and the sheep would rise up. As if you're stuck in the 80s. I just want to go and sit and watch my favourite Back to the Future movie. My stonewashed jeans and my stonewashed coat and my... Bon Jovi t-shirt need a wash. It's a disc hopper. Cool. I'm just gonna go. And end it on a song. An 80s song about a fish and his dish hopper on a boat with a hairy man. Ooh, a hairy fish man. There's sheep on the hillside. There's a massive It's so time to go. Wool. So much more. It's, it's time to go. Time to go. It's time to go. It's time to go. It's time to go. Yes, it's time it's to time take this boat to go. on home. Scene. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes. 
Lovely. Ah, pretty grounded and realistic to kick yeah. things off. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Uh, now it's time for one of us to leave the room. Who wants to leave? I'm happy to go. Yeah. Ev okay. Everyone say goodbye, Charlie. Bye. He was never seen again. Uh, we're going to do a game called Onset Upset. How this works is Charlie is a famous film star. He's come to Hollywood to shoot a brand new movie, never seen before, and he's brought a prop with him to complete the filming of this picture. The problem is, he's outside, he can't hear us, so he's going to have to guess those three pieces of information throughout with subtle hints from us. So firstly, which film star, alive or dead of any gender, is Charlie? Which film star? Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando. I don't think... Never had, that, no. never had Marlon Brando. Yes. We'll take that. Thank you so much. Secondly, we need a brand new made-up film title, a movie that doesn't already exist, for Marlon Brando to be starring in. What's the brand new made-up film title? Anything at all. I lost my pet dog in the pond. I lost my pet dog in the pond. I like how you started speaking, didn't know where that sentence was going. <laughs> welcome. That's improv. Yes, welcome. Welcome to our sorry lives. I lost my pet dog in the in pond. The pond. Great. Um, so finally, rather, finally, we need a prop unrelated to any of this that Marlon Brando has brought with him to complete the filming. What is the prop that Marlon Brando has brought with him? A sieve. A sieve. W what kind of sieve? Mm. A big one. A big one. <laughs> yeah, cool, why not? Yeah, so we have Marlon Brando. Brando. I, I lost, lost my, my pet dog, dog, in, dog in the pond. My pet dog, my in, pet the dog pond. in the pond. Uh, as opposed to the other kind of dogs that you own. <laughs> and a big, big sieve. sieve. If Charlie gets close, let him know he's close by clicking your fingers. So everyone practice clicking your fingers. Great. And if he gets all of these bang on, which is fucking unlikely, uh, feel free <laughs> to go mental. After three shouts, come back in, Charlie. One, two, three. Come, come back in, Charlie. Charlie. Starling, oh my God. It's so good to see you here. Oh my God, would you like a drink? Can I fix you a drink? I'd love anything. Oh. Oh, no, I actually have a scotch. It's what I always have. Scotch, of course. Yes. There you go. Oh my God. Thank you. You are looking well. Thank you. You're looking really, really well. Well, I, I pride myself on keeping well. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, obviously you've got the scotch there. Is there yes. anything else I could offer you? Perhaps rum, perhaps tequila, oh, perhaps... catering. Brandy. I'm afraid there's no alcohol today. What? It's only soft drinks. Let's because check. there's a worldwide shortage. This here, this was the last Fanta in Rome. This over here was the last Orangina in Brussels. And this... What's that? ...was the last Tango in Paris. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it's weird. He said there was no alcohol, but That's I just incredible. gave you loads. Well, there's plenty there, and there's lots of mixes here. Yeah, I again, suppose would I you should... like a, a rum? Maybe some more scotch? Maybe a brandy? Maybe... No, you're all good. I'm, I'm fine. Thank you, darling. I, it's nice to have the option. I, I, I do like to tango. I'm a dancer of sorts. Not really. <laughs> Perhaps in my own private time. <laughs> Maybe. And I see that uh, from your Instagram, you've been fishing, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. I love to fish. I often fish while away the hours. The only opportunity I get by myself. Is there I'm any so particular kind of fish you've been looking for? Maybe a, maybe a haddock, maybe a hake, maybe a pike, maybe a marlin, maybe any kind of fish that you're looking for? A, 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 a place or a cod? No, uh, like a, I say, place, cod, maybe a marlin. I don't really know. Oh, good. No, I'd, I'm a fan I might of all fish. Help here. Hello <laughs> there, I'm uh, catering again. Hello, catering. Yeah, this, this, I, I brought some beef from you from my farm. Oh, fabulous! I yes, love a bit my, of beef. my name's Mr. Oliver, so of course I own my own farm. So I have to, I have to be able to identify all the all the cows that I own. So I use this large heated up metal prod. Oh, you have to brand them. Yeah, with my initial. I'm Mr. Oliver. J. No, Mr. What? Oliver. Well, just Oliver. So I use this and oh. shut this heated up metal prod. Marlon Brando! Yeah. Oh, Marlon Brando! I'm Marlon Brando. I've just been working on the English accent. I'm going to stick with it so that I don't ruin it. Yeah, I was going to say, your accent isn't exactly what I expected. But hey, you're starring in this new movie. Oh my God, it is a tale of, of devastation. Yes, it is. It's a tale of personal loss, you know? I know, and I, I'm method acting, which is why I've taken on this accent. Okay, so, so if you were method acting, then what did you go and do? What did you lose? I lost all sense of my place on this earth. I traveled far. I jumped out of aircraft. I swam beneath the sea. I, 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 I went hunting in Africa with my friend Dave. I did all sorts of things. Wow, none of those are related to the title. <laughs> okay. 
You are barking up the wrong tree. You are oh. barking up the wrong I tree. I also went walking with my friends Dalmatians. With, oh. oh. They were your friends, Dalmatians. Yes, yes. So I... they weren't your own personal Dalmatians. No, but for the... Then it's not related to the title, no, Marlon. Right, no, it's course. It, I, but I, it's just part of the method process. I couldn't have my own dogs. I just wanted to know what it felt like to have my own dogs. Before I will need my own dogs. Many dogs. No, just, just the dog. one. One dog to end all dogs. But what a place to lose it. What, yes. A place where you wouldn't normally find a dog. No, you're quite right. In a cathedral. <laughs> No. <laughs> no, no, of course, I'm just... Not, no, this is an outdoor location, Marlon. Yes, it is. It's a field. Uh, uh, no. Of sorts. A very small field. Some people don't even describe it as a field. No, because it's not it's, a field. They might say it's a house. No, it's site. an outdoor location, Marlon. Building site, they might say. They could say it's a shopping precinct. No. Uh, how... It is an outdoor location, yes, Marlon. Yes, of course. And it's not a dry location. No, it's very wet. Yes. It's the sea. Yeah, I like that, but smaller. Oh, a lake. Mm, even a smaller. A pond. Yes. Nay, nay, yes. Yes, a pond. Walking a dog in the pond of life. But then something happened. Yes, it did. What? Stop walking. It began to swim, which was very sensible under the circumstances. If you say so, but then something happened, which means you no longer had possession of the dog. It was stolen from me. Well, <laughs> it was taken by a speaking trout. You don't know that. No, I don't. I have no idea because what happened Because one minute it, it was there. One the minute it was... Shut up. One minute it was there. The next minute it was no longer no, there. it was gone. So the dog was... Gone. No, you, Stolen. No, you knew where... Shut up. Dis- you know where it was, and then you don't know where it is. You have done something to the possession of this I dog. I misplaced... No, dog. yes, but no. I lost the dog. Yes! Okay. Of course. The day I lost the dog. So, no. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. Uh, I, was, uh, I was at the local municipal swimming baths yes. with my girlfriend, but we got thrown out because we didn't pay attention to the rules. Oh, were you bombing? No. Were you running next to the pool? No. What uh, were you, you doing? Were heavy we petting. Not heavily, no. You were petting. Yes, but, but on, only petting. one. You petted. You, you pet. Yes. 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 <laughs> the lost... No. My... No. Pet. No. Dog. No. No. Lost. No. Lost. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Marlon. Yes, of course. This is a personal tale, so it it's is. about... I... Yes! Lost my pet dog. But where? In the pond. Yeah. Yes! I lost my pet dog in the pond! Well, if you'd have just asked me what the title of the film was, I could have told you. Two-thirds of the way there. Yes. <laughs> Did you bring your prop? Of course. I carry it with me in my back pocket. Is that, for, is that for peas? Because it's very small. Yes, well, it, I mean, I had to get through customs. Then so. it's not the right one! Oh, Christ! No, perhaps you mean this one. That I had props department to build for me. Whoa! There she'd be. That is an order of magnitude above what you would normally expect. Well, I, I pride myself in my ability to make such things. Or have such things made for me and by me and with me. Yeah, so it's an order of magnitude larger than one might expect. So you would say it is... Huge. Well, not quite. Massive. No. Big. Yeah. Big. It is big. God. <laughs> so, yes, so- it is. It's very big, sir. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I had a flashback from my old job. I, I used to be in the armed forces, but now I'm no longer in the armed forces. Ah, big veterinary... No, no, no. Another word for somebody who's no longer in the armed forces. Not a veteran. No, no, no a if they're not a, no. No, a if they're not if they're not a soldier, they're now a uh, a civilian. Yeah. Yes. Ah, yes. But that gets uh, a big civilian. Yeah, no. Sometimes. <laughs> oh, your mind. It's like a colander. It's like everything. Civ. Yes. Yeah. So this is a big civ. Yes. Oh! <laughs> So sorry, guys. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> there are some nights we play this when we are so psychically connected as a trio. That game takes literally seconds. Yeah. 
Tonight was not that night. Oh, no, I'm sorry about it that. It seems. Charlie, once you've recovered, do you want to do a quick survey of the room? I would love to. First of all, guys, I want to thank you. You're already an amazing audience, so give yourselves a big round of applause for being awesome. Woo! You really are so amazing. I, we thank did you. ask earlier how many people had, had, had seen improv before, and I think there was one voice. So how many people here um, go to the theatre fairly regularly? So let's say half a dozen times a year. How many people go to the theatre half a dozen times? Excellent stuff. A few people. Um, uh, how many people are, are generally quite happy just going out by themselves? If they need just a bit of headspace, they'll just pop out and go to the pub and have a pint. How many people do that? Yeah. Awesome stuff. Excellent. How many people prefer to go out in groups um, so that they're not really alone? They prefer to be social animals. But please put your head into the air if you're, if you're that kind of personality. Great. How many people go out as couples? Actually, do we have any couples in? Put your hands up here if you're a couple. Keep your hands up. Yes. It was a trap. It was, it was a, trap. a trap. Yes. Hello, couple in the front row. How's it Yay. going? Hello. Now, you guys do not have to say yes to this, but uh, we would just love to have a conversation with you guys and get to know nothing embarrassing and stay seated. Would it be cool to find out a bit more about you guys? Okay, cool. Thank you, guys. What are your names? So we have Chris and Anna. It's Chris and Anna, everybody. Chris and Anna. Yay. So Chris and Anna again, you can stay seated. Nothing embarrassing, the room's just gonna get to know you. So Chris and Anna, how long have you guys been a couple? It is troublesome that neither of you are answering immediately. <laughs> Say again. Nine, Nine years, Nine that's years. wonderful, nice. congratulations. Where are you guys both from, by the way? Just round the corner. Round the corner. <laughs> Amazing, uh, and you've lived here all your lives? No, so where have you, where did you first meet, in fact? Was it here? Okay. Wow. Fantastic. Cool. So in case you guys didn't hear that, you met here at work, but you have been, you've lived in Australia, Liverpool, London. What did you guys do for work when you first met? In IT. IT. And Anna, cool. is it the same for you, IT? In sales. sales. And now this right. room is going to go crazy and applaud you when we find out what kind of thing you sell. You sell. What thing do you sell, Anna? Baby, baby products! Baby products! Yay! Fuck yeah! Let's look IT and selling baby products. That's awesome. Now, you guys met at work. What was this job at the time? Was this in the same company? Oh, well, obviously, <laughs> in the same company. What was the company, if we might ask? Tommy Tippy. Tommy Tippy Quality Products. As, as a parent myself, I totally yeah, am likewise. with you on that. Yeah, I've enjoyed your product. Thank you. As, yeah. as a single man of no children, children, I do not understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. Uh, fantastic. Now, presumably, you guys, you know, were working together, and then something happened. Who made the first move? Anna did. Anna. You're pointing at each Chris other. Chris is pointing at Anna, and Anna is pointing at Chris. Okay, so how did you two first get together? Did you have an official first date? Uh, it was on a work, work night, night out. out. Scandal in the stationery cupboard. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, whereabouts was this? Was this in your office? Was this... Uh, in this is in Newcastle. Newcastle. Whereabouts? In a club? In a bar? <laughs> Madam Coos. Now, Charlie, what is Madam Coos? You know, oh, Newcastle mate, I lived there for six years, and I never went there. <laughs> Um, tell us a bit about it. Is it just a club, a bar? What is it? Yeah, it's like a downstairs bar and pub. Cool. Okay, it's a cool. They're, they're, they're nice. pretty cool yeah. down there. Cool. Any right, further excellent. questions from you guys? Uh, so you've been together for nine years, you say. Um, you're married? Yeah. Excellent stuff. And can you remember your couple's song on the day that you got married? What was the, your first dance song? At last, nice. better James. Nice. You probably, uh, listen, guys, you don't need to worry about all these questions. No. You, um, no it's nothing, really. Um, we're just going to try and reenact your blossoming romance live <laughs> on stage. Um, but we like to do this with Darren Brown-like accuracy, guys, which is why we have two instruments. We have the chicken of truth and the horn of lies. Now, if we do something up here on stage, Chris and Anna, that is absolutely right. That is exactly how it happened. We want you to squeeze the chicken of truth. Yeah. But if we do something on stage that is not correct, that is not how it happened, and we need to change what we have just said, we need you to honk the horn of lies. So what we also need you to do, and it'll mean a little bit of moving around here, is you'll both need to have a hand on each of these, just in case there are any disagreements, um, which, which occasionally can happen. Uh, yeah, yeah, excellent stuff. But do use them as often as you like, okay? Yep. Exactly, so That's if right. we do something on stage that is correct, you make this noise. Incorrect. You make this noise. Perfection. Excellent. And use them as often as possible. Can we get a huge round of applause for the blossoming romance of Chris, Chris. and Anna, everybody? Morning. All right, everybody. As uh, general manager of Tommy Tippy's here in Newcastle, it's great to have you down for your uh, for your staff night out. Look, just Chris. turn it off and on again, you daft twat. Chris. Out. Sorry, mate. Sorry. No, it's all right, mate. You're always your quality at your job. That's why you're in the company. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Do you know what? We couldn't find anybody better. So um, you're all right. You're, you're sort of mid-level. Aye. Uh, 
but you're, I'm you're only here because you're a mate. You're just, you're, you're quick. Do you know what it is, mate? I showed up with my CV and I was the best man for the job. Aye. Some would say aye, some aye. would say no. Uh, but you're here, staff aye. night out, and I want you to be on your best behaviour, right? Uh -oh. I want you to get twatted off your face. That's what we do every year, staff nights out, you know what I mean? We don't do it much. We want to do it once every six months. Get us 15 bottles of dog. Aye, right now. It's what I've always admired about you, Chris. You're not afraid to get stuck in. Aye. You're the most masculine member of our entire team. You're one of the... You think you're the most masculine member of our team, but others might say no. No. I think you're on. Mixed feelings. Aye, there's a Aye. bit of mixed feedback. Either way, you're a good bloke, and I like Meanwhile, this. meanwhile, on the other side of the bar... Oh, I just, Anna. I just don't know. I just don't know what to do. What are you talking about? I've been looking at him for ages. Oh, well, I've been looking at him for an amount of time. Uh, yeah, well, I, I mean, not a huge amount of time, but I know his name. Everybody in the office always looks at Chris, though. At least some people do. Yeah. My God, he looks so strong. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? Again, mixed feelings. Yeah, you know, he does. Oh, but I... he's, he's got a reputation, though. You want to watch his... No, no, he doesn't. He's the nicest bloke. He's not even had a girlfriend all his life. Um, yep, clean record, no baggage. He's a lovely guy. And maybe it's, you should... No, well, no. well, you know... I I'm think you should make the first move. Well, I am a, I am a very proper lady. I'm a massive shagger! Oh, and uh, you and well, I, no, well, well, between us, we've been through most of the people in the office. No. No, no, I'm just joking. Uh, You've been through most of the people in the office. I'm joking again, no, I'm sorry. No. I'll make myself scare, sorry. Neither. All right. You should approach him. Okay, no. No, let him come up. Hello, come over. love. Hey. Sorry, I'm a bit of a mess. I'm a bit of a messy drinker. I'm a very tidy man. I've got to go. I've, I've, I've got a taxi. Yeah, yeah, fuck off. You're a canny looking oh. lass. Oh! But, oh, no. Um, uh, hey. Why, I? Uh, mm, hi. Yeah. Wow. I'm playing it cool. I'm. Our memories of this night are going to be different nine years in the future. Yeah. Aye. Would you like a drink? Give me a drink. Uh, let's drink together. Let's stay sober. Aye. Uh, I've been watching you in the office, you know? Oh, I... Uh, you've been watching me in the office. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm. No. No. We are aware of each other's presence and what we both do in our, in our separate departments. I just hope in nine years' time we don't disagree as voraciously on every single aspect of this. Yeah. No, I'm standing by that. Hey, hey. Can I ask you something? Fire I, away, love. Are you single? I am. Oh. No. I've got a couple of birds on the go, like. No. No. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a relationship. No, I'm single. I can't make up my mind. No. I'm getting mixed signals from her in that department over there. I don't know where I stand. You have the most beautiful brown eyes. You have the most beautiful blue eyes. Uh, yeah. They're like swimming pools I want to dive in. Oh. Hey, you know, I work in sales, but I think you're priceless. <laughs> I mean, I feel it now, but not strong enough to say it. No, I don't feel it now. <laughs> What do you think about me? I would like to turn you off and then on again. <laughs> Am I making your software hard? Oh, you can run your fingers over my keyboard. Could I be the slot for your floppy disk? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Listen, should we get out of here? Let's stay here. <laughs> Cut to the bar closing. We've been here for so long. Aye, it's time. I'm pissed out before can you Finish up now, please. Can you, can you get out? Look. Oh, I've made a bit of a mess like me too. No, no. we've been very clean. No, very respectful. 
Yeah. Look. Because I've been drinking me dog out of a two-handled cup. <laughs> ah, baby products, Aye. I guess. <laughs> right. I'm locking the doors on you. You was right. outside the bar now. Let's go down You're the, the big streets. market and get ourselves a curry. Uh, <laughs> on the way by, we can get in the cage at Sinners. No, let's no, just get a curry. Let's just get a curry. Cut to the curry house. Oh, this is the best curry I've ever had. Yeah, it's, it's a shame they make you stand up to eat it, though, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> uh, no, it's good. Listen, I never make the first move, but... So I'm going to wait for you to do something. No, I'm going to hope that you... Uh, I'm going to nervously pluck up the courage to do something that I don't normally do. I, I don't know. Hey. I'm, on, I'm just going to eat me fucking curry. <laughs> You know, I think you're like a Jal Frazee, because you're fucking hot. Well, people have mixed feedback. But I would like to take you back to my place. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. What happened on this fucking night? We should go back to one of our houses. No, no. We should part company and maybe have another date. It is very difficult to progress at this point. I'll tell you what. Cut to the next time we see each other. I said, turn it off and on again, you daft twat. It's the same bloody fella every week. Oh, hello. Can I help you? The what, other what? night was amazing, Chris. It was, wasn't it? But it ended so soon. It ended at the right time because while we are modern, we are also respectful. Yeah. And I would like to progress this to the next level. And I would like to ask you out properly for a drink, the two of us. No. Let's go to the cinema. Let's go to a restaurant. Ask me out, please. <laughs> would you like to go on a second date with me? Yes. For drinks? No. Yes. 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 Cut well, to the, that. Cut to the drinks. Wow. I love the fact that our relationship revolves around booze. <laughs> It's amazing. It's a great start. It's a great start. I've always wanted to travel, Chris. Oh, yeah. There's something about Australia. I've always wanted to go down under. In my mind, I've always wanted to go to Perth, to Adelaide, to Melbourne. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder maybe someday in the future you could join me there. I know it's a bit much, but I know this is very early on, but already I'm seeing something special in you that I think would last a very long time. Yeah, finally, something we fucking agree on. <laughs> I would follow you to the ends of the earth. I would, I would, you know. Australia, but not New Zealand. No. <laughs> Just no. far enough. I would go to New Zealand, I would swim the deepest river. No. No, I can't swim, no. Chris, I would climb a mountain for you. Chris, there's something you should know. Go on. I never, ever kiss on the second date. Come here, you big gorgeous hunk. Scene! Give it up! It's Chris and Anna, everybody! Yeah. Wonderful stuff, guys. So, Chris and Anna, thank you for being such amazing sports. Tell us, was that how it happened? Nailed it again! Thank you so much. It we nailed it. What Great absolute sports. heroes. Folks, on that romantic zenith, it is time for the interval. Ooh. Ooh. You guys get to eat food now. I believe there are more drinks and indeed a main course coming away. So we should be back once you guys are done. Maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, and we're back for the second section. Thank you so, so much again. Thank See you. you guys very soon. Goodbye! And please welcome back to the stage the man with coconut! Hello, folks. I'll be well. Did you guys have a good interval? Fantastic. Folks, we're now going to do something called an improvised musical. We're going to make up an entire musical on the spot, never seen before, in just 30 minutes. What? What the fuck? And uh, what we need from you guys are three titles of musicals that don't already exist. We'll take three and then vote on the one you guys most want to see. So could we please get three titles of musicals that don't already exist now? Pino Grigio, that's Pino Pino Grigio. the musical. I'll hold on to that, thank you very much. She says, yeah, inspired, so the way you get these ideas from, fantastic. <laughs> Pino Grigio, the musical, can we get two more? The Ghost of Gosford. The Ghost of Gosford. Yeah, great, Steve, do you want to take that one? Yes, And can please. we get one more? There's one at the back, I think? 
Say Sunset in Havana. Sunset in Havana, beautiful. Folks, we're now going to vote on these by way of a clap-off, which is not an STD. It's just a way of you guys <laughs> deciding which one you want to see. So why don't we start with Charlie? Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise if you would like to see Pino Grigio the musical. I, I, not even the woman that suggested him. Now then. Fair enough, Steve. Give it up for the ghost of Gosforth. <laughs> I didn't expect that kind of a reaction in Gosford. Yes, <laughs> unusual. And can we hear it for Sunset in Havana? Okay. Well, I think it's an obvious choice there. Yeah. Folks, for the first and thankfully last time only, we present Ghost of Gosford, the, the musical! musical! It's been another really tough day at school, ma'am. They keep bullying us. Don't want to go there anymore. Hey, listen here, son. I am your father, and yes, I may be from Yorkshire. <laughs> but when we moved here to Gosforth six years ago, and you were born, and then you got that accent, which was what we intended, and it's not because I cannot do an authentic Geordie accent. I know, Dad. It was to toughen you up, because the people in Gosforth are tough motherfuckers, you understand? Well, I know that's just the point, isn't it? I, I don't know, I'm, maybe I'm too soft. But be made so always tease us. It's because you're weak and pathetic, son. I know. I People know. say, I'm a bad dad. No, I'm just northern. <laughs> you've got to be strong. You've got to be manly. You got I don't to... know if that's what I'm all about, Dad. I'm only six. <laughs> it's the Yorkshire way. Someone punches you, you punch back. If these bullies are bullying you, you bully them back. You have to be the bullier, not the bully. You've, you've not been the same since, ma'am. I can't say it. Say it. I fucking dare you. <laughs> say it, son. Since, ma'am, passed away. I know. In that tragic combine harvester accident. I know. I will remember it. Like it was yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. Just here, drunk driving my combine harvester. Well, it's the thing to do in Yorkshire. Just take the dog for a walk. <laughs> what was that noise? I'm sure it's nothing. Yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. I was just across the road picking wildflowers. I mean, I know it's illegal, but I was only little. Nobody was going to get in, I wasn't going to get in trouble, but the fact was I had a nice posy of primroses and then... I didn't have anyone to give them to, Dad. You're sure in effeminate qualities, son. It's true. And some might say that I am displaying outdated, toxic masculinity, but no, I say you're a wee shite. <laughs> well, if I'm just a wee shite, then maybe I should just go. Maybe I should just set off in the world and prove myself. I might be six, but I think I can do it. Really? I do. I might be six, but I could pack a box of tricks so fine, and I could survive without you. I might be six, and I might end up destitute, but at least I wouldn't have to live with you. Well, you're no son of mine. You are no son of mine. If you continue to rant and whine, then you're no son of mine. Say it again. I said you're no son of mine. I said you're no son of mine. If you continue to rant and whine, then you're no son of mine. I remember the day it was so real. I was in that combine harvester in that field. I remember that lightning, my emotional thunder, when I accidentally killed your mother. Now that doesn't have to make you weak. So just remember the words that I fucking speak. You need to be big beyond the attack. If you get bullied, fucking bully them back. You're no son of mine, but you're no son of mine. If you continue to rat and whine, then you're no son of mine. Maybe I'm 
Just not tough enough, maybe you are right. Oh, fuck you. Maybe I should just get myself sorted out and toughen up. Yes. Maybe I should be more like the Yorkshire boys in our family. Yes. Like you and Grandad and the legendary Grandpappy. Then but I you're can... no son of mine. Yes, you're no son of mine. Son of mine. If you continue to rant and whine, then you're no son of mine. Northern things. Wow, well, here I am in Gosforth. I guess it's as good a place as any to lay down my satchel and uh, just park my tired old legs on this here, this here park bench here in Gosforth Park. Well, I say park, it's a, just a really big field. But it's kind of nice, it's green. I think this is somewhere I could settle. Maybe sometime do what I was put on this earth to do. Oh, hey there, little fellow. Why do you look so down? Just, I left home. A little young to be out here on your own, ain't you, little boy? No, I'm not, I'm tough. Why, you can't be much more than, what, five, six, seven years old? That's about right. Which one is it, kid? Six. Six. Six and a half, though. Six and a half? Wow, a big boy, huh? That's right. It's just, I had to leave home. And it's strange, you know. The further I walk away from the door, the more like a dad I start to sound. Yeah, that's a kind of mixed up, confused accent you have there. It's because I'm a mixed up, confused little boy. Wow, you're not too dissimilar to me. My accent isn't from anywhere, really. Uh, I'm just a man of the world. What's the matter, son? Why are you no, so I, sad? I'm, I'm, I'm conflicted. It's difficult because my, my mum, she told me not to speak to strangers, and you're a stranger, and I... Well, my name's Clarence. There. We're not strangers anymore. Besides, a stranger is just a, a friend you haven't met yet. Put it there, friend. You sure you're not a nonce? No. <laughs> you look friendly enough. Shake. Sure. There we are. I did have a name. You did? But I don't want it anymore. Why not? Because my daddy just called me son. He never called me by my real name. And now I don't live there anymore and I want to do something else with my life. I want to get bigger and stronger and I want to prove myself. That's what I want to do. Well, you know what, little one? What? You don't just get given a name. You have to earn a name. Are you sure? Yeah. That's how it works where I come from. You have to earn your name? Yes, you do. How long does that take? Oh, well, it took me nearly 150 years. What the fuck? Yeah. 150 years? Yeah. Sorry, I shouldn't have sworn. I know it's unusual for somebody to get a name so young, but I did it. But I don't understand it. The average lifespan of a normal person is 70 or 80 if you're lucky. Hmm. Wow. That sounds awful. Are you even a, a real? Are you a figment of shh, 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 shh. Starting to worry about you. Don't ask too, too many questions. Okay. Sometimes it's best to do and not think. <laughs> Sometimes people just have to do and not think. Some people have to do but not think. Sometimes your life seems to swirl down the kitchen sink. That's why you've got to do and not think. 
So sometimes I've got to do and not think. Sometimes I've got to just get on with it. That's the spirit. I can survive anything I want if I just try my best. And then one day I can go home and punch me down in the face. Whoa, whoa there, little fella. I don't condone that kind of action, little friend. Probably would if you met him. People who use violence, they come to a sticky end. We don't treat people like that. We just treat them with love. Sometimes you've got to wrap people up like a little fluffy glove. Some things you have to do and not think, not think. Sometimes you have to do and not think. I'm getting it now. Yeah. Sometimes you have to do and not think. Not think. So I'm going off to do and not think. Well, thanks, stranger. Well, perhaps you're not so strange anymore. No. It's great advice. I'm sure I'll be able to use it in lots of different circumstances throughout my life. And hey, if you ever find yourself struggling with life, uh, if you're confused and don't know which way to turn, then just come over to the Gothforth Park and you'll find me there. Okay? Hi. Oh, this bush looks nice. Uh, bye. Sometimes you've got to do another thing. Sometimes you've got to do and not think, think. Right, well, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I'll take my boggle and my stick, and I'm going to seek my fortune somewhere. Oh, so sad. So sad being here. So sad all alone. All alone, just me, my whiskey. On this night, the night I accidentally killed her five years ago. Hey there, stranger. Why so sad and what fuck glum? you doing in my house? <laughs> oh, this is your house? Yes. Are you sure? I don't know. I thought it was my house. Why? Where am I? You're in your house. Okay, good. So I was right. Yes. But were you? I've got a gun. I'm from Yorkshire. The fuck you want? Oh, I was just, uh, I was just moseying around. Bang, 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 bang! Bullets went right through you. Yeah. My name's Clarence. This is my house, too. At least it used to be a long time ago. You, well, are you a devil? Oh, no. Are you going to finish your sentence? Is there more to that? Are you just going to say you're not a devil? Nope. <laughs> so you're not going to finish the sentence, or? Oh. A demon? Vampire? What are you? Why so negative? Because you're in my house. Because I just shot you three times and the bullets went right through you. Oh, you sound like somebody with a guilty conscience, my friend. Sit down. Don't know why I'm doing this, but I feel compelled. Don't ask me how I moved that chair. I... It's just magic, I guess. You really feel like I grabbed it, then moved it. So you do know some things. Clarence, why are you here? Like I said, I'm just, uh, just passing through, just... Well, fuck off. I don't want you in my house. It's private property. Get out! You know what else is private property? Your thoughts and dreams. Yes. They're private property, but I have squatter's rights. So you know what I'm 
Get away from me. Sweet. I'm inside that big old head of yours. Well, get out. It's private property. I know all of your secrets. But there's chance for you to redeem yourself. How? Nothing can bring her back. I so desperately miss her. But she still lives on. In the face of your child. What's she doing there? That's private property. What's she doing in my son's face? I, I don't think you get what I'm talking about, do you? I'm from Yorkshire, we don't use figurative language. I mean, her spirit lives on in your child, your son. The son that you let go away into the street, cold, How hungry. How do I redeem myself? How can I relight the fire? I'm just a man who responds with anger to his actions Cause I'm from Yorkshire I don't know what to do I don't know what is my action I feel anger inside me, I want to reduce it Even by just a fraction What to do? Throw away your toxic masculinity What to do? Throw away your toxic masculinity. What to do? Throw away your toxic masculinity. What to do? Throw away your toxic masculinity. Sing about it so that I may learn. We all make mistakes. But when we do, we gotta stand up and know what's right. These chairs are very wide. Sometimes there is no shame. No shame. And saying, I was wrong, I wasn't right. But what to do? You've got to lower your fists. But what to do? And raise the levels of your heart. But what to do? Throw away your toxic masculinity. Away. But what to do? Throw away your toxic masculinity. Yeah. Ever since I, I was a lad, I remember responding. I remember I got mad. It wasn't great. It wasn't banter, but I always responded with anger. I used to clench my fists and feel this rage, and then at every single object passing, I would engage. But now what you're saying with your soliloquy is I need to let go of my toxic masculinity. What to do? What to do? What to do? What to do? Throw away your toxic masculinity. What to do? Away your toxic masculinity. Your voice got deeper. Throw away your toxic masculinity. Later that night, somewhere in the Pennines. It's fucking cold up here. I never should have left. I didn't pack too much in my woggle. Oh no, I'm not even carrying my woggle. Hey, look, look, it's that guy from the school that we bully. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Leave us alone, wanker! Wanker! Leave us alone, I don't... What the fuck are you doing here anyway? I've been walking for hours and hours and hours. Did you follow us all the way here from Gosford Primary? Yeah. We're seven-year-olds. We're bad yeah. motherfuckers. Well, you might be in the year above me, and you might always poke me and kick me and throw me on the ground in the schoolyard, but it's not the schoolyard here. No, it's the Pennines. Yeah, it's the Pennines. Yeah. Yeah, we're the ruler of the Pennines. We're yeah. the, they call us the they call us the Mountain Kings. The Mountain Kings. Yeah, yeah why that's do they, our gang name. Why do they call you that specifically? Because we live in the mountains. Yeah. Oh, sing about it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you wrote the song, I'll watch. All right. <laughs> 
Yeah, but I wrote this one as a duet. Ah, fuck, I forgot. Let's sing it sing together. together. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know this one. You always sing this one all the time. We are the mountain kings. We live in the mountains. We like to splash about in our private fountains. If you come to this way, then we are gonna get fuck you up. Fuck you up. We, we will, will fuck you up, up because we're the, the mountain, mountain kings. kings. Why guys? <laughs> it's a work in progress. <laughs> Where's your fucking duet? Yeah. <laughs> Don't need a fucking duet. Uh, I'm all right on my own. All right then. <laughs> Tell you what. You sing this song a lot in the playground, so all three of us will sing it together. Yeah. <laughs> we know this one. Yeah. We are school kids. kids. You, you are bullies. bullies. You I are a wanker. wanker. <laughs> no, I'm not. That's what so, you make me say in the schoolyard. You make me say that, but it's not true. I don't even know what it means. Ah, we like to. I tried to ask yeah. my dad, he just we punched like to, me. Yeah, we like to steal your lunch money and make you sing songs yeah. and punch you in the willy. <laughs> Another thing that 70 year olds do, probably. I remember what my dad said. He said, You've got, hey. you got to toughen up, son. Hey! Hey, come here. What? Yeah. Come here. Come here. Willy punch! Oh! Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now you did something violent. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, ooh, ooh, look over there. What? Ooh, they keep looking over that oh, way. What's that? Um, ooh, ear, ear flick. Yeah, there we go. it wasn't quite as, quite as bad as what I did. I punched him in the cock, he flicked his ear. Yeah. Second willy punch! No! Oh! What are you gonna do? Do you know, it's strange. Remember. I think I've been in this. Field Don't before. think, just do. I have been in this field before. It's the Pennine, it's not a field. Yeah. We talked it's it's talked about mountains and fountains. Yeah. It's not a field. All right. Wanker. You, you seem to know, hang on a minute. I know, no, hang on a minute. I'm interested. So, this is. You if you want to have a monologue, you, you're going to get your thoughts straight. We're no, not sorry, right, sir. You know a lot about mountains and stuff. I do. Oh, tell me 10 things about mountains. What? <laughs> Come on, you know loads. I'm just going to sit here on this rock. Is it a rock? Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. You know everything about mountains. We do. Tell me 10 things about mountains. Well, both of us. Yeah. Why don't you wrap it? <laughs> Go okay, on. Okay, You're wait. You're an expert. Yeah, wait. Hang on. If we wait, I think a funky beat might drop. Give it a sec. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds almost Cuban, which is fitting. Okay. <laughs> it's fitting for the Pennines. <laughs> Ten things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yo. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Ten things about Number one, mountains. here's a fact that's really astounding. They're really big, those things we like to call mountains. mountains. Number two, I'm a rhyme pro. Lots of mountains are topped with snow. Number three, I'm a force to be reckoned with. Biggest mountain in the world is Mount Everest. Number four, with these bars, the biggest mountain in the universe is on Mars. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's insane. Uh, actually, I can't fucking remember its name. But never mind. Yes, once again, the biggest mountain in England is not Big Ben. It's something else. Yes, fam, you check this. Number five, it's called Ben, ben Nevis. Nevis. Number six, yes, off the top. Oh, lots of mountains have lots of fucking rocks. Number seven, here's a fact that might be quite silly. Come into this mountain again, I'll punch you in the willy. Ooh. Number eight, let's keep it between us. Come here again, I'll punch you in the penis. <laughs> Number nine, if you sit on my rock, come here again, I'll punch you in the cock. <laughs> Number <laughs> ten, and it's time I'm to go. I'm a professional, come here again, I'll punch you in the testicle. <laughs> oh. Wow. Those are my facts about mountains. Yeah. I'm so intimidated. This is what you've always done. You've always known things more than me. You've always been more of an expert. But I remember something a good friend of mine, my only friend, ever said to me. What did he say? What's that? He said, 
You must sometimes not think, but just do. And what I really want to do is beat you up, but you're both seven and you're bigger than me. So I'm just going to do what I think is right, which is thinking and doing at the same time. And I'm going to tell you both that I don't want this fighting anymore. Yeah. I've been fighting all my life. And yeah. I don't want to do it. Yeah. What are you going to do? I don't want to fight anymore. What? It's true. I don't want to fight with you too. Fighting, I'm sick of running. I just want to make proper friends like you. What's this feeling inside of me? Are you feeling it too? I'm feeling something inside my breast. There's a feeling, and it's growing, and it's gonna smash out of my chest. What's that? I think feeling? it's love. I don't like it You may laugh And you may hold each other's hands When you walk away I'm the only one standing But now you are feeling love And I believe it's because of me I think it might be Right now you're feeling something that's bigger than all of us As we stand alone on this starry night I think it's love I think it's love Who's that over there? It's me, your father. <gasps> I had to leave the house because I saw a demon or some shit. I was spooked to fuckery. So I came here to Pennines. The only place I feel safe. Well, I don't normally feel safe with you around me, Dad. Even though my accent's morphed almost entirely into yours. Dirt, dirt, worry. His accent's changed the fuck ton between, sa between South London and Yorkshire. No, these are my friends. They used to just punch me in the dick, but now I know deep down it was just affection and that's just how boys react to one another when they really like one another. I've learned that name too. I tried to shoot a ghost. I've realised he was a ghost now. You can't always respond with violence. You can't always respond with, with rage. Then why do you keep doing it to me, Dad? Because I hate myself. And it's not an excuse. I need to work on my own issues. But I need to throw my toxic masculinity away. I need to tell you to stop punching back. And nothing can bring your mother back. But your mother had one thing for both of us. Love. And I accidentally combine harvested that love away. On a drunken night behind the wheel of a combine harvester. That's right. But I forgive you. <gasps> no. I've been watching over you all this time. Why didn't you fucking say something? You just fucking... Jesus, sorry. I know you don't like it when I blaspheme, but for fuck's sake. It was so hard. My love, Why how did you make it back? Surely well, you, you probably wanted to come and see me and speak to us both all the time, but you never could, but now you Do you, you remember can. the movie Ghost? Do you remember how Patrick Swayze started off as a rubbish ghost? Yeah, I was a bit uncomfortable watching that scene with you two. No, not that. Oh, sorry. Do you remember when he couldn't do anything? He couldn't pick things up. He didn't know how to communicate. He had to go through Whoopi Goldberg. But eventually, he learned how to move the penny. I've been starting with a penny. So wait, who taught you? Yeah, who taught you this? My friend, 
Clarence. <gasps> He's standing right there. I've got a friend. That's called... right. I was here the whole time, friends. Wow. You taught me mom how to move a penny. I did. That's I amazing. taught her so much more. Oh, yeah. We found love, didn't we? Did you? Yes, we did. Oh, you two fucking in heaven. <laughs> oh. It's legitimate. We had a proper ghost wedding and everything. Oh, bugger. Yes, we did. So I suppose technically that makes me your father-in-law? No, stepdad. Stepdad, yeah. Do you know what a father-in-law is? I, yes. That'd be if he got married and then it would be his spouse's father. But I that's understand not gonna that happen. now. He's six and a half. Wanker. <laughs> Throw away that toxic masculinity, Sorry, young man. Sorry, that is toxic. Yeah, that is toxic. That's what I've learned. I'll no longer call people wankers. Yeah, yeah, me neither. I've learned the true meaning of love. I've learned the true meaning of love as well. But yeah. you know what's interesting? None of us have earned any names. No. no. Apart from Clarence. He's earned it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I think I would like to name myself Joy. Because Joy is a joyful name. Yeah. What positive name would you like to give yourself? I'd like to call myself Charity. Because life's all about giving. Yeah. yeah. We're girls, by the way. Never mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> Just got deep voices. Yeah. Well, I've never That's earned a name. I'd like, I'd like to call myself Dick as a reminder of what a bastard I've been. <laughs> so that I may change my ways. Son, what name do you want? I think, given the really, really corrupted childhood that I'm having, I'm going to name myself Faith. Because I'm going to need a shit ton of it to get through this. <laughs> That's beautiful, son. Thanks. You taught me how to swear, Dad. Hey, bastard. <laughs> Sometimes you have to do and not think. And not think. Yes. You know, for a musical called The Ghost of Gosforth, it's weird how we're ending it in the Pennines. <laughs> Let's go to Gosforth together, together, together. together. together we're together. here in Gosforth. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's good to be home. And, son, you're welcome back here, of course. And, Joy, uh, Charity... Yes. We'd like to adopt you. Oh, that'd be lovely. Do you have parents, by the way? Yeah, we'll have to speak to them first <laughs> about that. See if it's all right. We can get that sorted. Great. I'm sure. Yeah. And maybe I realise my wife never had a name. What name do you want to give yourself? I'm going to call myself Happiness. Because that's what I found here in this home. Right, it's beautiful. No need to rub it in. Oh, in this home? Yes. I'm glad you've got a ghost husband in ghost heaven, or as it's also known, heaven. I'm glad that you found happiness. And I'm only sorry that I took it away accidentally from you by running you over in that combine harvester. Well, we're not going to stay in heaven any longer. We're coming down here to move in with you, because heaven is a place on earth. You're moving here with a new husband, really? Uh, yes. We're going to take the guest bedroom in the back. Uh, frankly, I find it, I mean, I love you, but I find it a bit insensitive. Shush, Dad, Mum. Yes, but... Now that you've learned how to move pennies and you can touch things again, I, I never did get to give you that posy of primroses. Would you take it now? I would. You know what? I think I finally understood figures of speech, because just like those flowers, I think love is blooming between all of us. You understand what I mean? Sure, it's weird you're moving in with your new husband. That, that's honestly difficult to accept right now. But I'll get around it, and I won't get angry. I'll move on, and I'll learn to not respond with anger. I'll learn to respond with love, because that's what it's all about in the end. And if it wasn't for you, Clarence... Yes? We'd have nobody to thank. So thank you for Don't being the best ghost of Gosforth anybody could ever have possibly imagined under any circumstances. Don't thank me. Thank yourselves. You all made this possible. And do you know how you all made this possible? Because you did one thing, one important thing, a message that you need to spread out to all young men in the world out there. What's that message? Throw away your toxic masculinity. Just cast it aside. Throw away your toxic masculinity. Don't be a cunt. <laughs> Do 
just this morning I was struggling with who I was and then I learned all about the faith I need just this morning I remember I used to get pissed I remember I used to take my hand and clench it into a fist but now I'm going to unclench it just right here I'm going to take a stand so each of you come round join me join hands every single person in this house even you even Clarence who's now fucking my dead wife oh all right I don't need to see it join together because it's fine it's all about love you know what you need to do throw away your toxic masculinity throw away your toxic masculinity going to throw away Toxic masculinity. Throw away our toxic masculinity. I don't be a cop.